I can't even wrap my head around the fact that that would have been okay ever. It's important to keep the history of racial covenants in our books, but not necessarily in our property's deeds. Was your home built in the 1930s or 1940s? If so, there is a good chance some of your home's paperwork includes overt discrimination. It could also have language that is simply not acceptable today and hasn't been for a very long time. Here's Fox 13 News investigative reporter Nate Carlisle. We have a plat recorded by Brigham Young, an original, and there's his signature right there, Nate. There's that kind of Utah history. No person or persons of any race other than the Caucasian race. And this kind. No person or persons of any race or nationality other than Caucasian race shall use or occupy any building or lot in this subdivision. This covenant shall not prevent occupancy by domestic servants of a different race or nationality domiciled with an owner or tenant. When a co-worker told Therese Grijalva those words were in deeds for homes in her neighborhood on Ogden's East Bench. I just found it gross. I mean, really horrifying to think that that ever existed. She decided to look at her own property records. I can't even wrap my head around the fact that that would have been okay ever. Neighborhoods all over Utah, like this one in Mill Creek, had language in their deeds saying only whites could own homes, excluding families of color from owning houses and from owning a piece of the American dream. A 1948 U.S. Supreme Court ruling negated such restrictive, racist housing policies. Congress did away with them too in the Civil Rights Act of 1968. But it was just last year that the Utah legislature finally created a process for homeowners themselves to fix the language. I want property owners to know that this is an option available to them free of charge. Salt Lake County recorder Rochelle Hobbs is launching a new effort to promote the program. It does take some research. You're going to want a free copy of your property record to see if there's discriminatory language in it. And then you're going to have the template available on our website and a notarized statement that you can mail in or bring in in person. Restrictions were written for homes across the country in the first half of the 20th century and are now the subject of mapping research projects from Washington, D.C. to Seattle. These are some examples of racially restrictive covenants. Jenny Nagy is an adjunct professor of economics at Weber State University who has been studying racist covenants. No person or persons of any race other than the Caucasian race. She's been finding them on properties in Weber County developed between 1939 and 1947. Maybe about one third to one half of developments during that time have this type of covenant. Nagy said the communities were motivated by the obvious, bigotry. Developers and property owners were concerned that racial minorities moving in would lower home values. There is not a lot of evidence to support that that is actually what would happen to property values, but that was a very prevalent conception. I think it, it's important to keep the history of racial covenants in our books, but not necessarily in our property's deeds. And Olivia Jaramillo is the director of public outreach at Equality Utah and a U.S. Air Force veteran born in Mexico. Having those covenants removed makes a big difference as to how comfortable a homeowner feels, especially somebody who may be an immigrant or somebody who is a second or third generation American that feel themselves as wholly American. It just shows that we truly are making progress in our state. I hereby certify that this is a correct plat. Hobbs explains that history isn't being erased. The original deeds will still exist, but instead a new document will be recorded saying old racist covenants no longer apply. And that's a big point to homeowners like Grijalva. I think it is a symbolic gesture to, to say that systemic racism still exists and we are going to do what we need to do um, to erase it or start to erase it. In Salt Lake City, Nate Carlisle, Fox 13 News, Utah. Now to find out more about your own housing covenants and how to change them, contact your county recorder. There's also more information on our website, fox13now.com. If you have a story you'd like the Fox 13 News investigative team to look into, email iteam at fox13now.com or call the tip line at 801-536-1314.